the law enforcement faces great challenge in terms of identification of crime and criminals. So nowadays, evidence that law enforcement need to bring criminals into justice is now located in the digital devices. So how to collect, store, analyze digital data, e-evidence, is a huge challenge, massive challenge for law enforcement. So the idea behind the digital security challenge is to leverage existing expertise, but not on the side of law enforcement, but on the side of private sector. Then we just create a mixture of the uh, law enforcement need and then expertise coming from uh, uh, basically private sector and academia. So we wanted to address the digital security challenge in the context of uh, admissibility in the court of the e-evidence uh, in a unique way. But a unique way means that the first of its kind. So collaboration between law enforcement and the private sector to bring challenge big challenge on the table, the how to address it. So we, we are going to uh, discuss, actually we have already discussed how to tackle this issue by engaging private sectors. So I think that that is a uh, fast idea, fast ideas to collaborate with private sector. Sometimes law enforcement in developed countries do not understand the capability of the developing countries. So the current the setting, scenario setting, is a mixture of the different skill set of the people. Well advanced countries, cybercrime investigators or the digital forensic examiners are now working with developing countries, actually cybercrime investigators. Their skill levels are so different, totally different, meaning that we can actually, some say, we can provide some sort of the uh, global, global platform where people can understand each other what can be expected from other country in terms of e-evidence support. So actually the developed countries inherently actually expect requested countries can deliver what we are requesting to them. But this is not reality unless that actually that all member countries will have the same level of expertise in terms of digital forensic. So mixing them up in terms of diversity of the backgrounds and the level of the uh, technical expertise, people started to understand we need to support others who they support us. So help them to help me. That kind of mindset was, I, I believe, was strengthened and then together with private companies, I think that the participants have understood who would be able to support you when needed, how. This is the key. So who, maybe private companies, maybe I think that's uh, some member countries, in particular member countries, but I think that that is most important. Once again, actually who would be able to support you, how, when needed. Number two is that uh, this, is, this is actually some sort of the foundation of the future in terms of uh, interoperability of e-evidence correction. So everybody knows now that, oh, what you are doing in the e-evidence correction, which is very simple procedure, is different from what other countries are doing. So there is no interoperability of the e-evidence correction. So e-evidence correction in Singapore is not actually the admissible in the court in Japan. No, because there is no standardization. So I think that knowing each other the methodology of e-evidence will lead to the next level of discussion. Okay, how can we establish standard operation procedure, interoperable standard operation procedure that will be employed by all membership of Interpol so that all membership of Interpol will be able to assist each other in terms of e-evidence correction. By doing that, by doing that, we can avoid duplicated process of, of, the, uh, of the, uh, the digital forensic examination. One country's forensic examination, digital forensic examination can be used in another country. 
just like a fingerprint. So actually, we need to establish global interoperable platform where e-evidence can be uh, collected, stored, analyzed, and then can be used for the investigative or the prosecutive purpose. So I think that that is something in the future which we see based on the today's achievement. So we just started the new journey, and that it is a long journey. We cannot make it overnight. Uh, maybe it takes uh, two to three years. I think it, everything has fasting. So we just started the uh, long journey. So I hope that that journey will be successful.